All right, it is Truth Matters time. We are in lesson 26. Time is flying and we are looking at Luther's small catechism, right? And that is just a summary of, of what we believe, uh, a statement is saying, look, this, this is kind of how we do scripture. This is how we, uh, what, what, what's important to us. And, and today we're gonna look at something that we do really in every church service. Uh, and that is we have a time where we confess our sins and where we hear of God's forgiveness. Now, the fancy word we use is confession and absolution. Uh, so absolution is just another word for a statement, a declaration of your forgiveness. Uh, and so very, very important, isn't it? Because we, ha we sin in our lives. Uh, now, again, as believers, we don't want to sin. Uh, we, we, ne we, we always want to be careful that we're not sinning again so that God could forgive us. Uh, we don't, we never want to take that for granted. It would be like, you know, I'm just going to be mean to my mom because she always loves me. Um, to me, that's like sort of taking her love for granted uh, and, and actually doesn't show love and, uh, and respect for her, but really just takes advantage of her good nature and her love for you. Uh, now, you would never want to do that, and you would probably go, man, that a person who would do that's a monster. But that's why we need forgiveness, because that monster sometimes lives in us, where we, we, we want to take God for granted. He's not going anywhere, and we know He is. Not going anywhere. Loves us. Always going to be there, no matter what. But I think that should be all the more reason to say, Lord, I'm gonna, I want to bring everything to you. Um, I, I want to show you you know, and be, and be honest about when I failed and, 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 and the kind of man that I want to be, the kind of person I want to be in you. And so that's why we give room in each service, uh, no matter what, for that time where we go to God. And uh, a great example in the Bible is, um, is David, right? 2 Samuel 11. I want you to take some time in 11 and 12 um, of, of 2 Samuel to, to look at that this week. Because David does the unthinkable. He, um, he sees a woman who is, is, is bathing, and so he's on his rooftop. He, he catches sight of her, uh, is interested. Uh, he should have just stopped. He should have actually, he should have been out fighting the battle in the war with his uh, fellow, uh, with, with his fellow countrymen. But he's, he's safe at home, and, that, and he gets into trouble. He winds up um, sleeping with her. He winds up committing adultery with her. Uh, he winds up having, getting her pregnant, and then he has to have her husband killed to cover it up. And it's just a mess. And so he breaks just about every single commandment there is. And, and so what God does is God takes a man named Nathan and sends him to David. And he says, David, I, I want to get your, your take on something. Like, what if a guy had a precious lamb, right? It was like his pride and joy. You know, it was part of the family. And, uh, and what if a rich guy came in and just took that? He, he has plenty of lambs of his own and he, he can have whatever he wants, but he just takes that one because he's nasty and he's mean uh, and, and he just, he's selfish and he takes it. Um, you know, what would you do to that guy who would do something like that? He's like, man, I, I you know, and he, I, he'd throw the book at him. Right? He would do the very worst that he could. And he says, you're the man. He goes, you've done that. You've taken another man's wife and you had him killed. It's awful. It's, it's horrible. And see, and David can't, he can't um, deny it. He's already admitted what he would do. He has already admitted the standard of justice and all of that. And so, so, so he has a, a dire consequence that he has to deal with. But see, but what he does is he, he doesn't hide it anymore. He deals with what would be a painful awful consequence and, and if you go to Psalm 51 you have his prayer of confession have mercy on me O God according to your steadfast love according to your abundant mercy blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity cleanse me from my sins I know my transgressions and my sin is before you are, are ever before me and here's the powerful part of the passage not that the other stuff's not powerful, but this is like incredible. Psalm 51, four says, against you, God, you only have I sinned and done, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you're justified in your words 
and blameless in your judgment. So here's the thing. Yeah, we may have to deal with consequences, we may have to deal with the guilt, we might feel horrible about what we've done, but really the worst part of, of our sins and the things that we do is that we offend God, that we have done them in His sight and, and that we have taken Him for granted and we have done a number on our relationship with Him by doing them. So that's what we confess. Lord, I got no, I got no room to talk, I got no, no wiggle room, I'm not gonna try to get out of this, but I am going to let you know that there it is. I need your forgiveness. I need Jesus. Uh, I, I know he died for me. I knew he rose for me. And that's where we get to the forgiveness part. And pastors have been tasked with this, right? It's kind of part of our office. We call it the office of the keys. This, it's been given us this, it's really a duty, right? An obligation. Like I, I, I don't have, when somebody comes to me and says, pastor, I've messed up and this has happened. I, I can't say, well, gee, I'm not going to forgive you. No, my, 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 my call is to say, Jesus died for you. He rose for you. And as a call and ordained, right? I'll say it in the words in the, in the, in the, in the service. As a call and ordained servant of his word and, and, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's many different ways we can say it. But, but the important part is when, is when it, it is proclaimed and declared that your sins have been forgiven and that you hear it just as if God himself was saying it to you. Right? We want to be clear about that. This is God forgi God's forgiveness because it's the cross that forgave you. That's how you were forgiven. He paid the price on that cross 2,000 years ago when he bled and when he died. And so my job and your job too, all of our, when, when we are talking with people who are, who need forgiveness, might be a classmate, man. It might be a friend. Just, I really messed up. Here's what happened. You have the, the awesome opportunity at that point to say, you know what? Jesus died for you. Do, do you realize that? Do you know that? That that's how much he loves you. Your sins have been forgiven. Let's talk about that. Let's pray about that. Now that's powerful, isn't it? It's powerful in the church service when we are on our knees and, 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 and in our hearts we are, we are going to Him and, and, we, and we're just, we're not making excuses and we're saying, Lord, this is it. Please forgive me. And when we hear those words, you're forgiven. The Lord doesn't count your sins against you. They're forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I pray that, that there's a peace that's there. Not because of what I've said, but because of His words, His truth, His sacrifice, His love for you. I'm, I'm just a messenger as a pastor. But it's an important thing. Because in that moment, everybody in that room hopefully knows that Jesus set them free. That he doesn't count their sins against them. They, they no longer have to live with that guilt and that shame and that they get to come home, right? And they get to live a different way. How awesome is that? How incredible is that for us? And so maybe try that at home like with your family members. Talk about what's going on in your life. Experience again every day in your, in your private time with God. Right when you're, when you're reading your Bible, when you're praying and say, Lord, just forgive me. Maybe at the end of the day, just saying, Lord, forgive me. Here's what I've done. Here's what's on my heart. Here's what I'm, I feel horrible about today. And maybe open up to like John 3, 16. That says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life, right? He, that's truth for you, right? That you are saved by grace, right? In, in Ephesians uh, chapter two. We're saved by grace through faith. By grace, by His love for you. Okay, that's at the heart of it. It's His cross, His sacrifice, His payment for you. And I want you to believe that and I want you to know that every day. Because really, I don't know if there's anything more important for you to know in your life but that God has set you free in Jesus Christ. I, I just pray that makes all the difference for you and uh, what we're going to do next time is we're going to get into uh, chapter 27 
And we're going to talk about uh, kind of a difficult topic of uh, church discipline and excommunication. All right. See you then.